Welcome back to the Adventures of a Disney Dad podcast. My name is Matt, and I'm a dad of three and the founder of adventuresofadisneydad.com, a travel agent with the Magic for Less Travel and your host. I'm joined by my co-host, as always, Chip Robinson, soon to be dad of five. Chip, how's everything going? It's going well. I know this is hopefully going to come out on Thursday, December, or the, the November 30th, which is our state championship day tomorrow. So hopefully next time we're talking, I'm a state champion. That's the goal. And for anybody that's new, Chip is a teacher and football coach at Maslin High School in Ohio, and they're playing for the state championship tomorrow, the same day this comes out. So go Tigers, finish off that undefeated season, Chip. We hope you get it, and and definitely good luck to you guys and to the Tigers. And I know there's some Maslin fans that listen to the show, so I hope you all enjoy the state championship and revel in it and, and all that fun <laughs> stuff. And, and I'm sure we'll hear about it when you guys get back, hopefully with the trophy in hand. This week, we are joined by special guest Justin. He is a content creator on Instagram and TikTok. He is at the Disney World Dad another fellow dad joining the show. And he's going to join us tonight to talk about Disney's Hilton Head Resort. Funny enough, he is there right now. <laughs> Justin, welcome to the show. How's your vacation going? It is going good. I'm glad how this planning sort of worked out to be here sort of on the scene as we talk about this resort. Um, happy to be here. I appreciate the invite, Chip. I did not know that you were sort of up late, so to speak, as a dad preparing for our state championship tomorrow. So good luck on that. <laughs> I, I haven't slept all week. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. He, he, he's what's that, uh, that Instagram and TikTok? you know, six cups of coffee in a dream. That's that's ship right now. No, no awesome. doubt about it. So as, as we said, we're going to talk Disney's Hilton Head Island resort. We're also going to talk some Disney world food rides. We want to get some of Justin's favorites and talk to him about all things dad life as we normally do on the show. We'll also have a few listener questions about Hilton Head. We've got a few games we'd like to have our guests play, a little Mount Rushmore, a little overrated, underrated. So we'll get to all those. We hope you enjoyed the episode. Before we get into that, Justin, tell us a little bit about yourself, your family, kind of how you got started in this Disney content creation world. Yeah, happy to do so. So I am a dad of three. I have three kids, technically, I guess, all under four with, I guess, still in the newborn phase with our most recent three girls. So I am team girl dad, and that's all I know. And, you know, that's what we do here. But yeah, so we're a Disney family, and I feel like it all started really when I was younger. I've always been just sort of a theme park enthusiast. It sounds so cheesy when I, I see other people say that, but I really have always been. And I'm from Texas originally, so I went to sort of the Six Flags around the state, but I couldn't go to Disney World growing up. I never really had that opportunity. So what I would do was, and my wife used to laugh at me when I confessed this after we met, I would watch the Travel Channel specials on about Disney World and, you know, Secrets to Disney, the the best rides, here are all the resorts. You know, you can find these on YouTube now, which I have to validate that they did exist. And so I used to watch all those things and I was in my college marching band. I went to the University of Texas at Austin where I met my wife and we got to go to yeah, all day. We got to go to the national championship uh, way back when, 2010. I think we haven't made an appearance but, since. Gosh, and, it would have been uh, like 2000, 2005, wasn't it? Just, Was that the no, Reggie Vince Bush? Young. No, we Young. played Bama 2010. And oh, lost. okay. 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 Yeah. Gotcha. Oh. And so, so the best part of that trip was that we got to go to Disneyland and Universal Studios for free in between practices and whatnot. And me, I was like, Disneyland, me, Disneyland for free. And so everyone who I traveled with, who was part of the marching band, they'd already been, they were so blase about it, but you know, I got to ride Space Mountain. I did the best time. Well, fast forward, you know, several years and after college and, you know, law school, I could finally afford to go. And so one of my coworkers, and I'm going to keep this as short as I can, I promise. One of my coworkers someone super, super senior above me was like, you're about to get married. We're going on your honeymoon. Are you doing a mini honeymoon? And I said, no, I hadn't thought of a mini moon before. I never even heard of that. And he was like, why don't you try Disney World? And I was like, Disney World for like, I don't know if I'm that kind of person who goes there for like a mini moon or a honeymoon. And he goes, oh no, it's one of the best places for couples. And I step into this man's office and he talks to me for like an hour. He has pamphlets like waiting <laughs> from, all, from all his visits. He's got like a guide to it, he makes a spreadsheet. And and this man charges a lot of dollars per hour. And he sat there for an hour with me and was like, you know, here's, you're gonna go to the California Grill, never heard of it. You're gonna yeah. go to the Contemporary, you're gonna stay here. So we, all this stuff, 
we decided to go. We had this magical trip, just us, no kids. And sitting in the Orlando airport on the way to leave, my Instagram feed was like nothing but Disney stuff because I think I had been just looking up so many things. And I thought, well, I could do this. And there's not a lot of dads out here at the time. This is like 2019 or so. And so that's how I started. So, yeah. That's awesome. So was that technically your first trip? Your- Walt Disney World? Yeah, I went as an adult. And I mean, again, you probably won't have me on after this, after how much I talk. But if we ever get a chance to talk about first trips, me and my wife are laughing about it today. I did Animal Kingdom first. Flight of what, was this, my first her, ride was ever. this her first trip too? No, no, no. She she had gone. Okay. She'd been to Walt Disney World. But my coworker had said, like, Flight of Passage is the newest thing. And we were still in our uh, Fast Pass era. And so he was oh, like... Yeah. You only get three if you stay on property. He's like, you better not stay off property. I mean, this man indoctrinated me like within an <laughs> hour of time. And so I followed his advice and I, I got, you know, I got Flight of Passage first, followed by Slinky Dog. And I did one other thing. I don't know. Galaxy's Edge wasn't open yet, I don't think. And so, you know, that was my first ride. And it was just sort of a roller coaster, literally, after that of like, I guess we're Disney people now and we're in the bubble. It's crazy how much you and I have have in common. Are you also a practicing lawyer still? I am a lawyer. Yes. So am I. So it's, covering. Oh, I know. I saw. I saw the. I went to your website and whatnot. Yeah. To your yeah, podcast. Yeah. Everything. I did my homework. <laughs> yeah. There he goes. But putting that aside, we also have another unique connection. My first trip to Disneyland was when we went for the Rose Bowl. I played oh. at University of Illinois. And so we got to go oh. while we were there for a bowl game also. How cool and it's, it's a crazy unique experience, isn't it? Oh like my God. Just being able to like go and, and, and do the rides and stuff like that. And I, Chip, I'm, I don't know if I've ever told you this story, but that, that team. So when we went to the Rose Bowl, we played USC and I think oh, they wow. had like 30 guys that went to the NFL from that roster, like oh, Ray yeah. Malaluga, Brian Cushing, Taylor Mays, like the, the whole squad. And I remember they had already been to the Rose Bowl a couple of times in the last couple of years before that. But when we were at Disneyland, it was the, our whole team was just enamored by being at Disneyland. We were all so excited riding everything and you're walking around and you'd see the USC players just sitting on the bench, just like could not be like more bored to be at Disneyland. Partially I'm sure because they're, they live in South, Southern California, but also because Right. But also because they, they were basically doing it annually going to the Rose bowl and oh, right. it was not a, not a new thing to them, but the rest of us were like, just, just blown away by Disneyland. So I fell in love with it too, a little bit there. So we've got that connection also. We're really happy to have you on the show and, and we appreciate you joining us. So let, let's, let's jump in. I guess so I want to ask you one other question. What is your Disney life like now in terms of like, how often do you guys go to Disney World, Disneyland, Hilton Head. What what are your, I guess on a yearly basis, what do your family vacations look like? Yeah, I think it's probably about to to change somewhat. I mean, you both, I know y'all seem to have either, I think you have three kids and five mm-hmm. on the way. Oh yeah. Wow. <laughs> Good luck. Early congrats for us. <laughs> Thank you. So we, I, I would say we go to Disney at least two to three times a year. We live pretty close by. We don't live in Florida, but we live close by. So we're in driving distance. So that makes it a lot easier. Again, I think that could change as my kids become, as my oldest enter school in the near future. And, you know, we have our our next trip planned early next year with number three. And she's still sort of sleeping on my wife all the time or on me. And so we think that's not going to affect our trip as much in terms of like when we're out and about. But again, once she's on more of a rigid schedule, that could affect things, how often we go and whether we think it's worth it. But we try to go two to three times a year. And we just, we try to do Hilton Head just at least once a year, only for the past two years though. It's This is sort of a new thing for us, but yeah, it's sort of, we're playing it by ear. We're trying to take advantage of honestly, the kids being three years and under and not having to pay for them. And, you know, them still sort of really enjoying being in this sort of bubble. And as they age, maybe they'll want to do other things. We're not sure, but we plan to keep going, but trips for us are very, you know, several times a year, very family focused. And we can get into this later on if you want, but more of a laid back, you know, I think because we get to go so often, we don't put the pressure on ourselves to complete everything, you know, compared to that first trip I went on where I didn't sleep. <laughs> we roped up everything. We closed down every single park, you know, that type, we don't do that. You know, we, if the, if something, if the line's too long, if a character line, I, I listened to y'all's episode about y'all talked about Mickey's not so scary, not so long ago. 
but I really yeah, definitely I, agree. I was with not, you. I was not pleased. <laughs> oh my god, I wrote, I wrote an article about that last year. Honestly, it, it's just, it, it's, it's a crazy event. Mm -hmm. We did just, I think, just a very few of the kids' rides, even paying those prices, because to us, it's not enjoyable. If you know, I'm not going to wait to see you know a character for. I'm not going to wait an hour and a half by myself. I'm not going to subject my children to that. So you know, mm -hmm. we we're more of a try to relax to the much as much as I can. You know, I do like going to the theme parks myself, but so we go as up to answer your question a few times a year, try to keep it as laid back as possible. Hey, I'll there tell you goes. this as a teacher, don't be afraid to pull your kids out. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, okay. At a young age, don't worry about it. Like even in high school, like if my kids tell kids tell me they're going on vacation, it's like you're probably gonna learn more on that trip than you are in, in here. So there's nothing, nothing wrong with doing that. I, okay, I think that, I you know, it, it could be a, a, an interesting discussion. I, I, I think, and Chip, I'd love to hear what you think on this. To me, the, the magic of Disney is in that two to six age range because kids still really don't, they, they, they it's magical to them and they don't really recognize that the characters aren't real or they, they, they kind of haven't lost it yet in their eyes. And so I always tell people, you know, that that's a really great time to go when you've got kids in that age range. I mean, Justin, obviously, I agree with you that, you know, when they're under three and you don't have to pay for them is is huge, too. But there's a lot of stuff to do for kids in that age group. But but Chip, you, you've you got kids that are a little bit older. Do you agree that 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 really special point is like two to six, the real sweet spot? Not to say that older kids don't have fun, but like the real magical spot. For sure, especially I think girls can go a little bit older. Girls are probably more the older range because my daughter still loves going. My son is like, then he'll complain about seeing Mickey, but it, my daughter's like all excited. I think that's why. I mean, it is. Listen, Disney World's probably more of a girls' park in terms of that's what Walt built it for was for his daughters. But don't get me wrong. I, you're right. Two to six is probably that great, that good age for all kids to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And Justin, also, I, I, I want to ask you one other question. Do you guys do Universal at all? We have not done it since 2019. We have done it before, but s since having kids, we just, mm -hmm. you know, it's not high on the priority for us. I Priority for us. I, I would like to go, but I honestly just tire myself out when I go to Disney that mm -hmm. when the kids go to sleep, I go back out into the parks at night. And mm -hmm. usually I, I'm like, I don't want to drive to Universal. And I love Universal. I, I really want to ride Velocicoaster. I still have not done so. And Harry Potter World is, you know, right up there. Wizarding World, whatever the branding is, is right up there. I think with a lot of the lands at Disney, we just, I just haven't gone back yet. I, I think I'm going to have to drag the two of you down there for like a dad's trip or something. <laughs> yeah, to, to make you guys... Let's do it. There, yeah, like I, I think in in like forty eight hours, I drank my weight in butterbeer and rode Velocicoaster. I think like and anyway, let, let's get into. There's a little bit of news that I want to touch on this week, and some of it doesn't necessarily need a whole lot of commentary, but I do think it's important to keep people informed, especially those that follow the company as a whole. Bob Iger was on TV today and confirmed he is done in 2026. When his contract ends, a lot of people have been speculating because there's not been a whole lot of rumors about his replacement or how that's going. And we all know how it went previously. He commented that the company, and this is probably the most interesting thing that came out of this today. He commented that the company is making too many sequels and will be focused on better stories moving forward. Now, this is coming off the backs of, I think in the last couple of weeks, Frozen 4 has been announced. Toy Story 5 has been announced. It seemed like he was talking about Marvel stuff in particular, but I'd love to get your guys' thoughts on is Disney making too many sequels or how do you guys feel about where things are with the movies Disney's making currently? I, I, I'm i going to guess none of us here have seen Wish yet, right? So none no. of us here have seen Wish yet. I want to. I'm paralyzed by the Disney Plus thing with young kids. Like, I'd rather just wait than worry about my kid not doing well in a movie theater or whatever at the time being. But what do you think, Justin? What's your thoughts on where things are with the Walt Disney World Company and movies? Well, to your point about Wish, I think it made around just under $32 million over the long weekend. And I saw that. I saw a really interesting piece in Variety about this, how they're breaking down that while everyone's screaming that woe is me for Disney, that, you know, honestly, they're a victim of their own success, so to speak, because 
you know, their banner year in 2019, where I think six to seven films made around over a billion, you know, Mm -hmm. how they're doing now would honestly be seen as a success for most other studios. The thing is they've set the bar so high and then also their budgets are way too high, you know, so they're dealing with a lot. There's so many things, you know, to discuss. This could be a whole other episode, right? But I feel like the (laughs) Disney plus thing is interesting that you say that because I'm in the same, you know, bubble in that, you know, we're going to wait. It's going to come eventually. We're already paying for it. We have small kids. And so you have the audience that used to go to the theater more often because we had kids, we were, su- we were su- supporting this brand, these animated features, and we don't need to anymore because they went so full stop on streaming as, at, you know, end of 2019 into the onset of the pandemic, you know, potentially by necessity, you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. they threw so much on there that we got used to it. And so now they don't know how to coax us back. And that, you know, is it sequels? Is it their output? I can't think of outside of the MCU, and depending on how we're going to define sequel, not to sound like a lawyer, right? It's Wish. And what else came out? It was Elemental. Elemental was kind of a sleeper success, kind of like Encanto, but more like on, you know, streaming. I can't think of what other titles came out this year that were a sequel. So I, if he's talking about the MCU... I think um, he's mostly talking about the MCU. That was, that was that was the insinuation, I think, was that it was, you know, kind of the Marvel Universe in terms of sequels but but also the big one and it's it's the one that i got burned on was lightyear i took my kids to see lightyear in the theater and it was a i don't want to say it was a bad film because having watched it at home now separately outside of the theater it's fine but it is not a kid's movie and Uh, you know at least not a young kid's movie under seven it's not it's not for that audience and my my son loves buzz lightyear and we had, we just had mismanaged expectations on what that movie was going to be. And we went to the theater and didn't even make it through the whole movie. It was like halfway in and we were out. So oh, that, okay. that, that experience is like in the back of my mind every time. Like when we talked about going to see Wish and Trolls is in theaters right now, we talked about this, it's the same problem. Like I'd rather just wait and, and buy it when we can watch it at home and watch it whenever we want to or whatever. But I, I do think Lightyear is like the one that sticks out really hard as one that didn't didn't do so hot in terms of sequels. Chip, Chip, what do you think? I don't mind going to sequel. We went to Frozen 2. We went and saw The Little Mermaid, the remake. Oh, I liked that, by the way. We no, saw that one good. in theater. It was good. The the only issue I have really is what else, what else are you going to do? I mean, the Marvel success was all on like Avengers. They need a new Avengers, in my opinion. I think they knew it, need a new Avengers. And I've not seen all the Marvel movies, but like Spider Man. They need new like, stories, is, is I think the answer is they need they all new stories. I don't need a new Toy Story. I don't know if I need a new Frozen, but I do. <laughs> I get it. I get it. I get why. I mean, Fro- yeah. Frozen's Frozen. They don't even have Frozen 3 and they announced Frozen 4. Yeah. And uh, and I, I think I think it's because they they've said that like the story can't be told in one film. Oh, that's not that's yeah, that, that, that. that's that's, not that's a, a recipe for disaster. Um and I will tell yeah. you, like, if they're gonna do Toy Story five, they better do it right. And wait, did we I, like I Toy Story Four? I didn't like Toy Story Four. I loved Toy one Story minute. Four, but okay, I didn't like Toy Story Three. Oh so okay. it, it, it like I thought you, I thought four ended it well. Like I was like, all right, we can end it. We're good. Yeah, and and I think you know Tim Allen's talked about it in interviews recently too. When when he kind of confirmed that he was asked to to come back, that he would only do it if the story was really good and the right writers are involved and stuff like that. So hopefully, I, I think the gist of this news is that hopefully they see the issues and they're getting things back on track. They talked about it in an SEC filing for investors you know, about the need to get back on the same playing field with their audience and without going into politics, which we don't do on this show, it seems like they understand the issues and are working on all those things. So I think that's great. On more Disney parks related news, the Dreamer statue was set to open in Epcot on December 5th. Hopefully that means a whole lot less walls at Epcot. (laughs) I feel like they've been up forever. Guys, we've seen photos, and if you haven't, you know, there's some on my Facebook and plenty around the internet. What do you guys think of the statue? Justin, what do you think? I think it looks, you know, I think it's a great addition. I mean, we always need another photo op. I think people who share images as much as, I guess, this community does, 
I, I'm just ready for the walls to come down. I, I just think that alone is going to enhance that, add the statue, and we're great. Cool, yeah. cool. Chip, what do you think? I'm the same way. I think it, I thought the statue looks sweet, but it'd be pretty cool, especially for the parents. I think it's more for the parents more than it is anything else. Like my dad, my actually my parents are going to enjoy yeah. that because they remember seeing Walt Disney when they were kids. So, yeah, I, I, I think it's funny that this Disney community finds a way to complain about everything. There were some complaints <laughs> about oh, no. how he's not off center and, and whatever. And I, I thought it's gorgeous. I like the fact that it's off center because if you sit next to him, then you're kind of in the center and, and it, it it's, it's a really gorgeous area. I think they did it well. The last thing that I, I think is worth touching on, and it was about a week ago, Josh Tomorrow was interviewed and reiterated Disney's vision for replacing dinosaur and that area at animal kingdom with the Indiana Jones and Kanto and Coco themed areas. It sounds like it's happening guys. How do you feel about it? Justin, are you happy, angry, want more dinosaurs? What do you think? Okay, because I do like dinosaurs, like as a person, <laughs> but I feel like Dino Land could, you know, it could use an upgrade. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I have a couple of things. I don't mean to come out swinging, so to speak. I don't. Coco is not my favorite movie. It's. I know. Justin, I know. I, we might, I might have to kick you out. It's not. It's not my. The music to me is a tad. Oh. What's the word? Grating. And I have seen it several times. And you know, Encanto's got the tunes. You know, those are those are those are bops. I'm ready for it. I I, I think that's going to be a great addition. Tons of money making opportunity. Cross merchandising sequel like that. Just I just see dollar signs. I get that. Also, as a fan of films, '80s films, Harrison Ford, etc. Who is who likes Indiana Jones this much? I, I, so who who with the cloud at Disney likes it that much to where it needs to come like that? That with all the money they're making, they're gonna just retheme the ride. Like I, I don't, I'm not hating on it. I'm just saying it could be could be a different opportunity for something newer or something different. It doesn't that have was another Utopia. sequel that that was another sequel that needed to die. Thank you, Dial of Destiny. That's a good example. Dial of Destiny. Just you know, even with Phoebe Waller Bridge, couldn't resuscitate that. That's a whole different yeah. episode. You know, and so I I'm excited about. I don't know what terminology they use to be correct here. It would like tropical something land. I don't know if they used the word Latin. I totally support that. I, I think they I think they called it South American. South American. Um, okay, at least yeah. at least they've mentioned that a couple times. Yeah. But you know they, they've been clear that it's a vision, nothing concrete, all the corporate right. speak. But I, I, I will fight on Coco because it's I, it's one I, of my it's, it's one of I'm my very from movies. fighting this fight. So I, 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 <laughs> it's one, it's just, it's one of my it's favorite. It's good, movies. not great. I, that's how I feel about it. Just good, not great. I, in my that, opinion. That's, hey, I'll settle for good, but it's, it's a, it's a beautiful film, man. It, that, that movie gets me every time. But Encanto is, I, I hated Encanto at first. I've talked about that in the past on the show, oh. but it's, I, it's come around for me big time. I, I rant on this occasionally, Justin. They should have given Mirabelle a gift. Seeing that poor little girl touch the doorknob, oh, yeah. I'm not gonna rant on it again, Chip. I promise. I'll <laughs> I'll shut up now. But but, but I'll Chip, is, that, is, that, is that gonna be the sequel? I hope so. I hope. I, I mean, there's got to be an Encanto sequel. Well, um, but I need to know was, if, if she one. has a gift. I need to know. Again, tangents. Look, I can see the time. What do other people's rooms look like? Like Camillo shapeshifts. Is his room like a house of horrors of like mannequins and stuff? Like, I just Ooh. need to know. I don't mean to go so dark <laughs> Disney, but like I need to know about the other rooms and whether they have the sort of imagery that we get yeah. from Antonio and Isabella. You know, again, is this coming to the parks? I just have a lot of questions, but maybe we can get those answered. Shout out to my mother-in-law, Kim, who asked uh, Mirabelle at Magic Kingdom if she has a gift. And I don't remember <laughs> what the answer was, but it was very much a roundabout non-answer. So uh, we'll, we'll leave that one at that. Chip, that. What, what do you think about these about these new areas? I don't mind it. There's so much space over there. It's just I always forget about Dinosaur Land. I'm not gonna lie. I always forget about it. I love Dinosaur, and I get it's the same track as Indiana Jones out in Disneyland. Do they need to not going on a rant here? But do they need to do a James Bond ish move with Indiana Jones and replace Indiana Jones? I, I don't know. Well, they, I mean, they're gonna they're gonna have to if they keep doing movies. But hopefully that. And I, I'm a Harrison Ford person too. I love Harrison Ford, but it's about time. 
I don't, Hopefully I don't those people go either. away. I, I, yeah, I don't think we need any more Indiana Jones, but that's just my not the you know get at any Indiana Jones stands or or whatever. But <laughs> you know the the other thing I'll just say is like at this point I don't care what you do with that area, just do something because yeah. Universal is kicking their tail in terms of innovation and building new areas. Okay. Like it is something needs to happen fast. So let, let's, let's talk a little bit about Hilton Head Island. Cause that, that's what we're here to talk about tonight. And a lot of people don't even realize that Disney has a resort in Hilton Head Island. They've also got one in Vero beach, but we we've all three been to Disney's Hilton Head Island resort. Justin is there right now. Justin, we'll start with you kind of what, what stood out to you the first time that you visited Disney's Hilton Head Island Resort and what kind of what drew you there in the first place, the first time you went? I think what drew me there here in the first place was that I live not too far from here, just a few hours away, and the opportunity to just see another Disney resort. I'm intrigued by the idea of Disney, you know, once upon a time building resorts outside of Orlando, outside of Anaheim, and you know how there's not many, they sort of stopped for whatever reason. So there's sort of a level of intrigue in the sort of enigmatic, they're, they're, they're tiny, there's not many of them. And, you know, they're Disney Vacation Club resorts. Uh, I'm not a DVC member, so I just had to pay outright and look online for this. And we can talk about that in terms of how to book later on. But so I just wanted to visit another Disney resort and I, I wanted to see what it's like to visit one that's not attached to the theme parks because as a theme parks enthusiast, you know, person, it's interesting when you come here and so many of those things that we sort of both enjoy and stress out about, you know, the genie plus of it all, the logistics, the transportation, the operations, you know, I'm interested in those things, but it takes a lot of time when you're at the, um, at Walt Disney World, I guess, or Disneyland. And so to have to come to a Disney place that removes all that, I was just intrigued by that. And in terms of first impressions, it's really just laid back, low key, you know, quiet. I, I think just the, the, the 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 color scheme and sort of the decor even from outside it sort of blends into the marsh and the surroundings so it's it's kind of like blinking you miss it literally it's just sort of sitting there quietly and i like that about it yeah absolutely chip what, what are your uh first impressions and what drew you to hilton Head the first time i the whole island's that way i mean we we went first time I, we didn't stay at disney we stayed we st- I've, always, I've always stayed in palmetto dunes which is where mm-hmm. the, the the beach house is at but we drove by and we passed things all the time because there's no signage. It's a mom and pop area. It's just, it, like, like Justin said, it's just chill. It's uh-huh. very relaxed. It's very quiet. There are people there, but it's also quiet at the same time. There's the bike paths. You, I mean, it's, it's beautiful. It's one of those things that we, we went the first time because I've been up to on the northern side, like uh, Hunting Island and Fripp Island, just north of Hilton Head. And it, down there, it's like a city, but it's a quiet city. I don't know like how else to describe it, but there's ever there's everything there. It's it's beautiful. resort and we, what they have is a beach house on the ocean side which is a, it's beachfront property and there's a small little van that'll take you from the resort across basically across the street it's literally a five minute drive through what's called palmetto dunes which chip I, i've stayed in an airbnb there it's it's a really popular area for airbnbs and also there's other resort hotels that, in that area but they take you over to the beach house and they drop you off there's a little shop there. There's a restaurant. They have beach chairs that you can rent and, you know, use. And then there's a, you know, there's a shower, a beach there. shower. There's a pool up there. They, they've got all the things you'd expect from a Disney resort at the beach. But there is that little five minute shuttle that you have to take to get back and forth. Or, and I think this is probably more common. You, you have to rent a car usually, unless you're driving in. Justin, I assumed you drove because you live close mm-hmm. by. But if if you are from out of state, the big difference between going to Walt Disney World and going to Hilton Head is you have to rent a car because the flight in is usually to Savannah and you're looking at like a 45 minute drive from the airport to the resort. And I don't think that there's a way you can fly in any closer than that. I could be wrong, but there's an airport. I'm pretty, so but I, I don't think there's very many that 
service it's not many. that airport. They mostly connect. Yeah. They mostly connect to like Atlanta and Savannah, maybe, yeah. and it's not yeah. very frequent. Yeah. Yeah. So like by the time you deal with the connecting flight, you're better off just running the car. So you could drive, you could, if you're at the resort, you could drive yourself across the street or you could use the bus. There's a lot of great options, but at the resort side of things, you know, they've got, it's got its own pool. So you could stay at the resort. You don't have to go to the beach. And then it's got um, a bunch of different activities that you'd expect from a Walt Disney World Resort, a s'mores campfire. I think they've got a, a putt putt, if I remember correctly. They've got a jungle gym and it's very much, it feels like a wilderness lodge, animal kingdom lodge kind of vibe to it. Very cabin-esque feel. And the marsh is absolutely gorgeous. It's the views are amazing. And they've got, you know, restaurant shop at the resort on that side of things. My favorite part is you can go over to the beach house and you can get a Dole Whip, which, you know, I think everybody that loves Disney loves to be able to do and how often can you get one on the beach so that's pretty cool but it, it that just kind of gives people the vision i think if you've never been there you've never seen pictures and you've never been to hilton head just understand you're flying into savannah you're taking a 45 minute drive and then you've got beachfront property pools all the things you'd expect from disney when, when you talk about transportation justin you've you've always drove Chip, do you you you? I assume you fly into Savannah, right? In the uh, red car. What have you done? No, we oh, you drive. drive. It's about it's okay. twelve hours from up here in uh, Northeast Ohio. I've driven every time. Actually, it's not a bad drive. Yeah, that's 12, 12 hours with. That's less than kids, I thought man. it would. Twelve hours is less than I imagined it would be. It's that's... sixteen to Orlando. Yeah, yeah. that that's maybe it's ten that's... hours. It's maybe, but it's not too bad. I mean, it's for me. So Myrtle Beach is eight, eight or nine. So it's only a couple more hours south, but it's, we like it more because it's not built up. It's not the Myrtle Beach where it's all sky rises. There's, I mean, if you go down to Caligny, you're going to see those, but where the Disney resort is and go down to Palmetto Dunes, there's only three level, maybe four level places. The Marriott's really big, but other than that, nothing else is really that big. And, and it is very much a, a locals vibe. It's not a, it doesn't, I feel like you hear people going to Hilton Head all the time, but it's, it's not a, it's not built up like a big tourist spot. And, and Justin, I'd love to know, like, so there's a Whole Foods there. There's a Walmart there. There's a few local restaurants that people love. What, what does your family do in terms of, do you guys order groceries to the resort or do you go pick them up yourself because you can drive? What, what's your, what's your vibe for your family there, Justin? So for us, I will say how you compared it to a couple of other Disney resorts. When people ask me, I say it reminds me of Wilderness Lodge by the beach. Like that's mm -hmm. like the shortest answer I could give them. So that was a good point. But what we do is we place an order. We'll do a Publix order. Publix is, you know, I'm sure you've heard of Publix. It's, if if mm -hmm. people haven't, it's, you know, one of the large grocery chains uh, in the Southeast. We'll do a Publix order while we're still home and have it ready to get picked up as soon as we, we make our time. We have to stop a lot, obviously, because of the small children. But we'll pick that up at the beginning of the trip because Tide Me Over, which is, we can get into this later, the one place to eat here at the resort itself, not at the beach house, they close at five. And so we may not make it by then or we have so much to unload with the kids that want, you know, try to have groceries up front. And then because they, there's a Whole Foods really, really close, closer closer to the resort than either Publix location is, we'll do Whole Foods sort of in the middle of the week as needed. And yeah, we, we our first trip and this trip so far, we have stuck to the resort more often and our groceries and what we have. But last time we came here, we sort of explored some of the areas in the Shelter Cove shopping area, which is where obviously the resort's located. Found some okay places. Uh, I don't know if we're going to talk about food separately. We could do that. But we're more. You, well, a, you can talk about it now if you'd like, for sure. Go ahead. Uh, the one, the one place I, I want to shout out, and this is not sponsored or anything, but in the Shelter Cove area, there's a place called, I think it's Hilton Head Social Bakery, and we really like that place. And they just have really good pastries and like breakfast foods and lunch foods, and good variety of foods. Open early, you know, stays open pretty late as well. Comparatively speaking, if you're someone with kids, but. One thing that's cool is that the chef, the person who owns it was like the executive chef at, I think the windows to the world. I think that's the right name, which was the restaurant atop the world trade center once upon a time. Wow. So oh, like, wow. it's like a legitimate person serving really good food and they have all the information, like 
I'm that nerd reading the pictures on the wall, yeah. waiting for my coffee. I'm like, oh, wow, this place is pretty cool. So we always hit up that place and shop around that area. Is that by, that's right. Is that right next to like the fish market right there? Because I've eaten there. Yes. Um, is that Scott's or something? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah it's, it's right that's there. Yeah. Good. Yeah. We, we stay, we do Shelter Cove. So we, we ventured last time, went to a public beach, tried some other restaurants that were just okay, honestly. So yeah, we, we, we kind of stay around the Shelter Cove area when we do visit. I, 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 I got to recommend one place. It's my, it's probably top three restaurants all time. Okay. Is one, one hot mama's. It's okay. a barbecue. Oh. They do smoked fried chicken. And it is the best fried chicken I've ever had. She, the lady who owns it was on like the first season of, I don't know, like next food network star. Oh, awesome. And it's, it's like, it's like a, I mean, Southern barbecue. Oh, the, the fried chicken is literally like I go and I, we ate there three times last time and I got it to oh, go nice. because it's, it's the best fried chicken I've ever had. Awesome. We'll do no good wreck. Yeah. I think you had one other or was that it? Do you have Me? one other recommendation? Yeah. I do have another place. There's another place called the the Sea Shack. It's actually down the down the road from. I'm looking at it on Google Maps. It's down the road towards Caligny. They have a shrimp burger, and I have no idea. Like they're like, oh, this is what we're known for. I'm like, all right, I'll try it. It's like a crab cake on steroids. It was it was so good, awesome. and it's cheap. That was like it was like a ten dollar meal. Like it was like a quick service oh, wow. type of place. They have like family specials, like. It's all mom and pop places. So that's that's the big thing, especially when I go on vacation at Hilton Head. It's always mom and pop spots. Right. Yeah. There's a there's awesome. also a really good pizza place called Giuseppe's that's right there in Shelter Cove, and and we love it. They're huge Steelers fans, which is is a and that that's the one thing you love about the mom and pop spots is like you walk in and they've got cool decor or what or you can actually feel out the vibe of who owns the place and they've got Steelers stuff everywhere, which I can't stand, <laughs> but, but it's a, it's a cool spot and, and it's good pizza. And when I'll just say like for my family, like when we went to Hilton head, it was very much like we were cooking it at, at our place and cooking for the kids and, and going to the beach. So it was a little bit of a different vibe for us than just because going out to eat with kids can be, can be a lot. And That's Hilton awesome. head is much it's a much more relaxed. there is not a lot going on in Hilton Head for kids and that that's just being blunt and honest you you but you should bring you know card games to do in the house or things like that but Justin is that kind of has that kind of been your experience and you know on the days that it is cold like if you're there this week and it has a, you know a chilly day or whatever what is your you know what what are you, some of the things you like to do at, at the resort Right. I, I, we have encountered cold weather. We did last year, but it actually warmed up pretty significantly, especially for November, like got into the high seventies. So we didn't feel that as much last time, but we are feeling that now it's been colder these past few days. And I, I feel like it, it goes without saying, but I'll say it, this is context specific. My kids are still, I guess we could say at that magical age where it doesn't take too much to, 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 you know, distract them or say like, oh, look at this tree, you know, look, look you know, look at this, okay, <laughs> yeah. let's learn about this. They're still at that age. And so I can't speak to someone who has older children who might be like, you know, this is awful, but we've just put, it's been in the fifties and sixties in, in the mornings and midday. We just throw their, you know, we'll double up their jackets and we just let them go and explore all the little activities to do. So what we've done is we've watched the calendar one, and I think today we painted today, we made wreaths yesterday, you know, whatever is going on, you know, they're young and we're watching them and obviously it can be messy and stressful. So, you know, your mileage may vary at this point, but we're sticking to whatever they're offering at the resort to have something to do since we can't get that guaranteed pull time. And then in between those moments, you know, we're just, you know, there's bocce ball nearby. There's a huge chess set. My kids love that. Again, they're young. There's a cornhole set nearby. 
and there is a playground that they love. You mentioned the playground already. And mm -hmm. so we're literally just, me and my wife are holding our coffees and number three, the baby, and letting the elder two just run up and down and get their energy out. And for right now, that has been enough. But yeah, it, it is hard because they, they're, you know, they're old enough to ask to go to the beach. And we're having mm -hmm. to tell them we're going to wait till the end of the week when it warms up because we can't risk taking them to the beach, as you said. So, well, especially kids, with a baby, with a with a baby, you gotta you, right. you can't, can't be out there that. when it's cold. But you you know you you hit the nail on the head in describing what a Disney resort is, right? And when you go to Walt Disney World, those are the activities and the the things that they have there that most people forget about because they're too busy going to the theme parks. Right. You know, but you can tie dye T shirts and do Spanish mosaic at Coronado Springs and a lot of that fun stuff. Hilton Head has that and has those activities too. I think if I remember correctly, they, they also do movies under the stars occasionally. It might be too cold for that now, but I, I think they occasionally do that there. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I haven't seen that yet. This time. Um, I, 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 I could be they, wrong, but I, I, I think the community they center, right? Like, like the DVC properties, I think there's, that's where you go and do all your activities. Do they have one at the beach house too? I thought they had uh, they do. for some reason. Oh, they do? They, there's like that. a they have actually that place is notable because when we came last year it was like the warmest room like that we had encountered so we like hung out there for a while on a cold day but yeah it's got like a fireplace and it's like real nautical themed of course and they have like a photo booth where you could take free pictures that say like dvc member on it i'm not a dvc member but it was nice fun fact yeah. and, and and to touch on that a little bit too just because i'm a travel agent i have to to plug this people forget all the time that you don't have to be dvc to stay at a dvc resort whether that's hilton head or elsewhere you can book it just like everybody else it's just the the availability is different the room types are much much better you usually get a lot more space you usually get a kitchenette included in the room you don't get that normal two queen standard parking lot view type of room availability but you you usually get more of the studio kind of feel with a couch and you know a seating area and things like that but don't be scared you know to reach out to book that kind of thing because we can book it just like we can any other disney resort and you know to to one thing that justin I, you may have mentioned this to off the air before we were, we were recording like you get better prices when it's a little cooler too and so if you're looking for a place to get away that's disney it has all the customer service and the cast members and the vibe that Disney has, but not necessarily at Walt Disney World, a different type of vacation. It's a great spot and you can get you can get some crazy deals if you're willing to like spring break was like pretty, pretty affordable compared to Disney. And it's because you're risking the possibility of it being cold. That, I, I would say that they, they also have cast members that have been there that have stayed there since it opened. I think it opened in. 94 98 somewhere around there and they've had cast members that opened it up that are still working there today i know there was a dog there's a sweet dog story with hilton head was it a stray dog that just kind of hung around when they were building it and then they put a dog house up and it lived there it lived on the i i feel like i remember there being a big issue about that with covid because the dog i don't feel i feel like didn't come back or or something to that effect I, they, I don't, yeah I don't, I don't think they brought it back after that and a lot of people were upset about it justin let's jump into a little bit more about dining at the resort in particular can you walk people through that aren't familiar with what the dining options are at the resort and kind of what you like or maybe don't like about dining at hilton head yeah so uh, bottom line up front, there's not many. There's only one on the actual property. It's called Tide Me Over. It is in sort of the main, like, Broad Creek area next to the Broad Creek Mercantile, which is the souvenir shop. And it is quick service only. You, you can't dine in. Essentially, you know, for people who don't speak the Disney speak, there's nowhere you could go sit down and eat at this resort, like, inside of in, indoors inside of a restaurant. You, there's places to sit outside, you know, but it's cold right now. So, you know most people are taking it back to their room right now and then at the beach house as you mentioned which is just you know a mile or so away there is signals and there which is another quick service shop which is literally just you walk up and there's like one table and then there's a bar there and the bar is separate but you can't get food from there signals is only open between i think 11 and 3 so very limited hours so what you know what i'll say is i enjoy the food it's quick service food you know we our expectations are not high, you know, even though Disney's up their game with the food in recent years, it's still a Disney resort. I'm not expecting, you know, a Michelin star. 
So it's quick service mm -hmm. food. It does the trick. The kids like the options. They've got Mickey waffles for breakfast. They have Dole Whip at both Tide Me Over and at the bar at the beach house. They have enough Disney touches to make it enjoyable, but we offset that with groceries. If you're someone with older kids or someone with more of a, if you're looking for more of a refined experience, it's gonna, you're going to find it lacking here because there's limited hours. Like I said, Signals is 11 to 3. Tide Me Over is, I think, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And so if you dine at different times, if you're looking for something different, you know, it's not, you're not going to have sort of, you know, the Port Orleans experience where there's the Red River Mill. I think that's what it's called. I always get that name wrong, where there's a bunch of dining options. They're all quick yeah. service and they're also not the best, but there's a lot of options there. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not going to get, you know, the Polynesian where there's Ohana right here, Kona right there, and then Captain Cook's, I believe, right below it. And so, you know, I do enjoy it because I know what to expect and I know the parameters I'm working with. For other people, I think it may come as sort of a shock to see a Disney resort with so few options. And I, I think it's sometimes in the summer, they'll expand the the hours a little bit. And and one other cool thing I want to mention about Signals is even if you don't stay at the Disney Resort, the beach access is next to the beach house. So everybody uses that same beach access spot, regardless of whether or not you're staying at the Disney Resort. And there's a walk-up window for non-Disney Resort hotel guests that you can get um, drinks. I think they have very limited food items for that window. But more important, you can get Mickey bars and Dole Whips and stuff like that. So if you're staying at an Airbnb or whatever in the in that neighborhood, don't be afraid to pop over and get your Dole Whip fix and and stuff like that. But Justin, I think you you've kind of nailed it on the food. You you really, if you want a, a good meal, you're you're going to be going to one of the local spots. And with respect to the local spots, make sure you're making reservations. It's not ADR yeah. type reservations, but don't go to Giuseppe's for pizza and expect you're not waiting an hour and a half or or whatever because some of those places are really popular. So yeah, de definitely. It, I, I think we've kind of covered the gamut on Hilton head. It's a really I great got, spot. I got, I got one more. What, what kind that? of room are you staying in? You know, one bedroom, two bedroom. Oh, I'm in a two bedroom, two bath. We usually prefer this because we, awesome. we just need, we need the space. Yeah. It's, awesome. it's great. It's, I mean, that's one thing to point out this. I don't know if you mentioned at the top, but to be specific, it's a Disney vacation club resort there are no standard rooms here they range in studio i think up to two bedroom two bath i don't think we have any grand villas here there's no there's no um, grand villas yeah yeah and, and so yeah. it's spacious the the rooms need a zhuzh as our friend well, pam forster at the magic for less would say well they're Some undergoing them, i was going to touch on that they're undergoing major refurbs right now yeah so and, but it's it, yeah, and and they they definitely they definitely need it. Like they're a little a little dated, but hopefully that'll be done. I think I I can't remember the last time I I read one that's expected to be finished, but hopefully soon. Um, and they're definitely next year. yeah, they're definitely knocking out all the rooms. So keep an eye on that if you're booking a trip anytime soon. There were two listener questions related to Disney's Hilton Head Island that I want to ask. The first one comes from Chris. What are the best times of year to visit Disney's Hilton Head Island Resort? Touched on it a little bit, and and as Justin pointed out, your mileage may vary in terms of what you desire and what kind of vacation you want. But Justin, if if you could pick one month of the year, what's the one month, or I guess what's the one season that you would prefer for your family and recommend to others? I'm gonna pick the off season. I'm here right now. I'm evidence. I love the summertime. I you know there's a decent amount of beaches nearby. I, I feel like the first of all, the fight to get in here around the summertime is pretty tough because DVC members, you know, can take up a lot of it. So for us non-members, you know, it's 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 pretty much a battle to try to get there. Not that you can't, but it takes a lot of effort. But I think the off season, lower prices, less crowds, you know, it's a sleepy town that gets even sleepier when everyone leaves. And so if you have small kids and you're like I do and you're always overstimulated and you're trying to just really relax, try for the off season for a better chance. Chip, if you had to pick a season or a month, what are your thoughts for our listener, Chris, that asked this question? My favorite time is actually like rated right right at, uh, end of May, early June. It's before their peak season starts. Hilton Head goes to school until like the second week of June. We've got, always gone that first week of June, and it's sometimes the weather could be a little bit chilly, but you're also sometimes going to get that 85 degree day 
and I like to golf, so I always golf at Hilton Head. It's a great place to golf, so we love going around then. The more you get later in the summer, it's packed. Like it, it, Hilton Head is busy all the time, but off season. But I love going right into May, right when school's out. That's where we love going. I think for me, it's going to be closer to the, the the summer, end of May, June, and just from having booked vacations at Hilton Head, it's hard to get the spots there um, at that time period, and it's expensive, so it just kind of becomes more problematic. But for me, like with the age of my kids, you got to be able to go to the beach or be in the pool. And if you can't, and it's cold, it's a tough time. And we, we experienced that. Unfortunately, we had one day where it rained the entire day. And I think the closest place to like do any kind of real activity outside of the resort was like 45 minutes away and it ended up being an absolute nightmare. So, you know, definitely think through, especially if you've got that weather coming in and you see it on your, you know, when you're planning your vacation, maybe the week before, really start to look into what activities you're going to do with your kids if it rains, because I, I do think that that's important, especially if you need something outside of the resort. And there's plenty of, of stuff to do as we talked about, but it's, it's, it can be tough sledding. My, my son would be not happy with me if I didn't say it. they do have a nice water slide. Uh, but so one of the things that bear and I like to do is we like to watch, look at all the water slides on all the, all, at all the Disney resorts. And he really wants to do the Hilton head water slide. So we've not been to Hilton Head with him, but obviously now we're, I think we're going to have to because he just wants to do that water slide. I have no idea why, but. And Justin, I'll mention this to you too, just in case you haven't checked it out. There's an awesome park, like 10 minutes south of the Disney Hilton Head Resort. That's a, it's themed to a pirate ship and it's, it is massive. They've got trails back there, but it is a great park for kids. It's near, there's, I can't remember the name of the shopping center, but there's like a lot of candy shops and restaurants in the shopping center across the street from the park. Definitely would encourage you to check that out for your young kids. It is, it is a really, really cool playground and would definitely awesome. recommend well, it for any families. It's down by Caligny. It's just north of Caligny. Yeah. I, I can't remember okay, the name. Okay. I can't remember the Low, name of it. Off Low end. Country Celebration Park. There, there you, you go. go. Low Country. Go. That's okay. what it was. And it's, it's definitely, it's very cool. So that's going to wrap it up. I think for, for our Hilton head discussion, definitely check it out. If you're interested in booking Hilton head, reach out to me so we can get you a free quote over at the magic for less. We're going to jump into a little bit of some fun stuff, some fun Disney talk, and and maybe we'll chat a little bit about some of Justin's favorites, or maybe we'll have to get you back on the show to talk a little bit more Disney world, but let's first talk about overrated or underrated. Justin, we we like to make our guests go through, and sometimes we do it on our own, but we do a Disney resort, a Disney ride, and a Disney food item, and we talk about whether or not they're overrated or underrated. For some reason lately, every single time we do this, we've all ended up with the same opinion. So it'll be interesting to see if we we fall that way this time. But Justin, we're going to swing it to you. Overrated or underrated, Disney. I'm at the Ellen Compass getting a Disney whiskey and, oh, now I'm at Hollywood Studios, you know, 15 minutes later, just got it all. So I think it's. So you, so you think it's, it's hyped up appropriately, right? Yes. Fair, fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. I, I think that's a fair answer. Chip, what do you think? I'm going to say until I see the new rooms they're doing the villas, it is overrated. Ah, oh, you <laughs> took my answer, man. You took my answer. <laughs> like, for, literally for the exact same reason. For the same reason. But but man, I'm also going there. So, I, Chip, that's, Chip that's, for, that's, for our listeners, Chip texts me. I, I I don't even think I to be honest with you, I don't even think I was awake yet. First text message morning. I had this morning was Chip with a screenshot that he just booked his trip at Boardwalk Villas through DVC <laughs> because I always give him a hard time that he can't book through me. He he books through <laughs> DVC, but he's very excited. So I'm not going to rain on his parade. 
but we'll we'll see what happens with the new rooms for sure but as justin pointed out the location is prime uh, for me it, it it's just never lined up really with what i'm looking for personally and and the pricing also when i'm booking it for guests i feel like the the pricing tends to be a little funky and by by that i mean like there's always something else right around it that is either less expensive or just a little bit more that i would rather be in and that's where to me it's it's a little on the overrated side it's just that it it ends up just being in a weird spot with the pricing and then the rooms and kind of what i'm looking for so that, that's just that's my thought on it so next I think one the board oh, one, oh sorry but i have one last opinion just i want to spout is that as someone with small kids this could also change it definitely felt the most like adults of like you know and i don't mean that like in a like a film description i just mean like it i was walking by <laughs> jelly roll and like the, whatever the piano bar's name is and some of those, you know, there's people like, you know, doing street performances and stuff and just the crowd, you know, it didn't feel like, you know, the lobby of the Grand Floridian, obviously what does, right? That's a terrible example, but it just didn't feel as Disney-ish. And I, I'm like, okay, I'm glad my kids are asleep for this because, you know, this is a much literally by age an older crowd. And if you're, I think people who are looking for that are very enthusiastic about it. For, and, and to your point, I think for like an all girls trip, or like a bachelorette party kind of the girls are all getting together and having a girls weekend. It's a great spot. And I, I think it, you kind of hit it on the head there for that reason. There's a lot of, you know, like women that are going down for princess weekend. Great spot. You know, it's a great spot for races and, and things like that. And I feel like it, it fits that vibe appropriately overrated or underrated Disney ride edition frozen ever after. Justin, what are your thoughts? Overrated. Uh, uh -huh. If I didn't have kids, I wouldn't write it. I, I like Frozen. I like the music. I It's fun, you know, but that's a long line for that experience. And uh, I feel like nothing beats seeing, you know, all of my girls so excited and seeing it and coming out and getting them a souvenir like we always do. I do it dutifully, but I don't think I would spend my time there without that excuse. <laughs> Without without kids, essentially, and I'm right? I'm not I'm not a I'm not a like super fan of the ride that was before. Is it Maelstrom? Oh, I, yeah, I I'm not coming from that place. I just think that, you know, it's it's not to me. It's overrated. Chip, what do you think, bud? I'm gonna say underrated. Um, oh. I actually enjoy it. It's one of our favorite movies. It's like, and it's probably one of my favorite because my daughters watch it nonstop. My my four year old, I guess she's five now. She watches it nonstop, and so we enjoy it as a family. The one downfall is the animatronics, and it's. I think it's the only. It's. I think the queue is great. I love seeing the, the big guy. Like that's my kids call me that. They say I look like the Yoo Hoo guy. Yoo Hoo. Like, <laughs> like, so I like I seeing like all that. That queue is awful. You're all squished <laughs> into the space. It's unnatural. If there's an emergency. No. I'm also not. I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna say I've never waited in the real queue. I once had a lightning lane. I haven't uh, either. I haven't <laughs> either. I just look at everyone else and wonder what are we doing with our lives. That's that's the epitome of of walking through the queue and you're like, you know, you make the comment about like hide the money, y'all, or whatever the <laughs> because it's like, man, like you, like you really, 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 if you're doing Epcot that day and you want to do it, you need the Genie Plus because that yeah. that would be a miserable line to wait in. I, I too think that it's overrated. My kids love it. I love riding it with my kids, as Justin pointed out, like very much so. But the animatronics are terrible. Like the, the digital video on their faces is awful. It's not Disney. It doesn't meet Disney standards. That ride and the animal or the, the frozen animatronics at parks other than Walt Disney World are much, much better. And it's just disappointing. I hope they replace it and do so soon because I know that we're not the only ones that have made that kind of comment. But the one thing I'll add is the Frozen Anna and Elsa character meet is underrated, which is oh, right agree. next door. And it's one of the best character meets at Walt Disney World. And, and in my opinion, it's because people don't realize how great character meets are at Epcot. They don't realize how many of the princesses their kids can meet. They And, you know, they think of Anna and Elsa as always being a long wait, and it's really not. 
there's a lot of times you can go there and it's a very reasonable wait for a character meet, you know, 30 to 45 minutes. You're going to wait 30 to 45 minutes at town hall to meet Mickey. So um, it's, it's not unreasonable. And I, I think that part of it is very underrated. So definitely check that out. And, and, and we're not saying don't ride it, right? Chip thinks it's, it's underrated. Justin, I think it's overrated, but still ride. I ride it every like, time though. Still, yeah, still yeah, every so, freaking time. Say same, same here, but there, there's going to be parts where you're a little disappointed for sure. <laughs> so the last one is fitting for Hilton head overrated or underrated dull whips. And when it comes to dull whips, I'll, I'll give this caveat. The traditional dull whip is the pineapple flavor. I, I think we can all agree with that. They, we, you can go and get the ice cream with like an orange sickle flavor and chocolate swirl and things like that. And so if you like one of those, to me, it all falls in the same category. So I'll, I'll give you that caveat. Overrated or underrated? Justin, what do you think? Underrated. I think Dole Whip is, you know, I didn't even know what it was when I went to the park for the first time. <laughs> Some person was like, you know, make sure you get Dole Whip. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And I tried it. I can't have, I can, but shouldn't have dairy food while we overshare. I know we just met. So it's one of the rare things that I can get that's sweet and good. And Disney, that's not going to make me regret it. It doesn't require a lactate. So Dole Whip is underrated every time. There you go. Is the pineapple your favorite flavor? Oh yeah, tried and true. I I, I think I tried, I did the Garden Grays. In uh, 2021, I believe at Epcot for the Flower and Garden Festival, and they had a like a lime flavored one as part of like the prize. You know, you pay to eat to just get more food, and as part of that, and I thought that was fantastic. So more lime would be great, more citrus. I think the the one that they have at the Beach House, at least when when I was last there, they only had like cherry or uh, strawberry. Okay. It's either strawberry or raspberry. They didn't have uh, pineapple. They only had oh. it was the pink. It was pink and white. I see. Okay. Yeah, okay. and and then you could get just just the pink, not not the vanilla ice cream in it. But Chip, what's your what's your thought? Overrated or underrated? Okay, are we are we talking just a Dole Whip, nothing else in it? Just the ice cream. We're not. We're like. You can have the different flavors. We're not talking about like putting the strawberry, all that junk on top and uh, making it I, some I, big parfait or whatever. Okay. Then I'm going to go. It's overrated. I love the, don't get me wrong. I, it's a, but I don't, I'd rather have a Mickey bar than a, just. A oh, regular come on. Chip. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I would not now. Yeah. No if way. We can add the, the, I'm a pineapple connoisseur. That's my favorite fruit. If I can add the if I add, add the pineapple juice or whatever to it, I would get that every single time over anything. But you said have, just, have either of you like bought the Dole Whip that you can buy from the store? No, I refuse to. No, but I've got it at that orange leaf like Froyo place. They oh. just casually have Dole Whip there, like <laughs> soft serve. And I I went with um, my wife and kids and some family when I went uh, to Texas not too long ago, and everyone's like, "What's the big deal?" I'm like, "You don't understand. Like this is <laughs> this is." Don't wick a Disney adult, and I ate it. But yeah, I've I had it from the store. I've had it in Hawaii, so I've had it there. I guess. <laughs> yeah, okay. but that that's not that. like the little <laughs> little cups that you can buy at like Jewel or Kroger or wherever. For for me, like it's tough. I I think the pineapple is overrated. It just just my own personal opinion. But we love the orange, the strawberry, the chocolate, the different, you know, mixtures that you can get. My wife, I think, loves the orange sickle one. So I, I think those are great options. Sunshine Terrace is a must stop for anybody else that's at Walt Disney World. You have to stop there. Make sure you mobile order. I hate seeing like a line of like 30 people that don't mobile order there. It drives me nuts. I feel like I need to start a campaign against people ordering in line at Sunshine Terrace at Walt Disney World. I, I just stand there with a cardboard sign. It says, use your mobile order. The last thing that, that we want to do here, Justin, and this is a, this is a newer segment that we're, we're starting. It's a fun game, Mount Rushmore. And I purposefully did not tell you about this in advance, okay? <laughs> so Mount Rushmore is going to be your four biggest, best, most favorite things Disney-related. And it can be at any of the parks, but you can pick resorts, rides, or food, or restaurants, however you want to describe it. 
what are your top four most important things to you in the Disney World universe? This is a toughie because I'm putting you on the spot. Well, because I mean, like important to like the lore, like the world. Important, important to, to you personally, you and you personally in your Disney journey, you, your family, your vacations for you. It can be you can have happily ever after. You can have mm. a resort. You can yeah. have a ride. You can have a restaurant. What 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 are your things that like really stick out to you that like they're the most important things to you when it comes to Walt Disney World? Okay. Well, shoot. I could say that, right? There's so much to say. <laughs> One, I'm gonna go back to the beginning to Walt Disney World. Flight of Passage to me is just like sets the bar. You know, I haven't rode Velocicoaster, which I feel like that's not the same thing because it's you know your inside simulator, etc. But that ride was literally the entrance to the Disney World for me. And maybe it wasn't the smartest thing to that be your first ride at the world because it was just like this rollicking ride. I hadn't eaten that day. I had coffee. It was like 7 o'clock a.m. I was the first person in line of rope drop. But it, I have to ride it every time I go. I will play for Genie Plus. I will wait to ride five minutes before closing to get in line. I, it's like I need to get my fix. So Flight of Passage, and I've like argued with people like in a Starbucks who said that ride is not worth it, uh, <laughs> like coworkers, like you know what I mean? Because <laughs> it means it means that much to me. So Flight of Passage, I'm gonna say Bay Lake Tower means a lot to us. We've stayed at a lot of different DVC resorts, and I understand architecturally it is unique. It looks like an apartment complex in like a non-US city, and and I understand that the theming is. Some would say, you know, question mark, where is it? But I just really like the vibe of that. I like the close, you know, being able to walk back from the Magic Kingdom, especially after after Happily Ever After, with your, you know, just holding your kids' hands and like, you know, eating a pretzel or something. I know how I sound, but it's just very magical. That's um, what this I'm that's just, what this question is all about, right? right. Like that, and I'm gonna sound like about. a I'm gonna sound like a monorail loop stan but the electrical water pageant to me is like as a kid growing up i wasn't able to go to the disney world theme parks and so i would see in magazines or on remember those or on like the travel channel i i, I was we had cable thank god and i would see specials about these like mystical looking light up objects on this like large body of water and i was like what like what could that be so every time we go at least one night we have, you know, we have to look out for, you know, the music and I got to watch it with both of my, with my girls, I, they had to stay up late and watch it. And they've talked about it ever since. So we're keeping that tradition strong. The fourth thing, I don't want to drag this on too long. So I'm just like thinking of anything. I like that. Hey, listen, I like the water patch and I'm with you. Uh, that, yeah, I, it's, it's, it's a must for us. I don't know. I'm trying to think. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be, I mean, this might sound, it sounds so basic, but the monorail, I mean, we, we sit there and we ride the monorail sometimes. And like, that's the ride, you know, mm -hmm. my girls are like, I want to ride the monorail today and they'll pick which color they want to ride. We don't care where it's going. It only goes so far, right? Like we're going to get back, yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, we just, you know, sometimes I'm the typical person I'm at Epcot and I just see it circling around and I'm like, well, you know, that's awesome. Yeah. So those are hey, my chip. Four. Chip, what would be one of, we'll just go with one of each of ours, because we'll, we'll do this on a couple of different episodes. What's one of your Mount Rushmore items? I think the only, like my number one, and we have to do it every time, is we watch Happily Ever After, mm -hmm. or the fireworks show at Magic Kingdom. It's just one of those things that I remember doing it with my mom in 18. My dad was with me, and he was crying, watching my kids watch it. You know my dad, so and so, and we 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 saw it the second night it was back. Oh, nice! Twenty twenty one. We actually watched it from Polynesian with a Dole Whip, <laughs> and then it's just it. We have to see it. Like, I'll, when we go this summer, I'm probably going to see it twice, mm -hmm. at least. It's just that's probably my number one thing, and another reason why I'm at Boardwalk is to see the fireworks on Fourth of July right there. So, but yeah, th that's that's my number one. For me, one of my Mount Rushmore items, and, and this always throws people for a loop, it would be Coronado Springs, Grand Estino Tower. And it's because it's the first resort that I got to stay in with my kids, like once I was a dad. And there's just, there's something, I just love it. And I, I can't, I try to tell people, and some people get it and some people don't, but like Grand Estino Tower, it really is like a deluxe resort at a moderate price. 
And even if you put the price aside, I would still rather stay at Grand Casino Tower than some other resorts. I love the food there, but it's it's one of those places where you go in there and like it, it hits you in the feels. Like you smell it and you know you're at a place that you really want to be at. I have one of the Magic Candle Company candles that's called Destino that I burn in my office all the time. It's literally right over my shoulder. And I I just, I love the smell of it. And it's because it reminds me of being at Grand Destino Tower. It reminds me of my first couple of vacations with my kids. And it it bums me out to no end that I'm about to be out of Grand Destino Tower because they don't have rooms for five. Mm. So like you're either booking two rooms or you're out of there and I, and it, it, it hurts my soul. But when I go solo, that's where I like to stay. When I go with my family, I love to stay there. So that would be one that's like special to me. And it, and it's not me arguing it's the best resort. It's just, you know, this Mount Rushmore thing is individualistic. So listeners think about what your Mount Rushmore would be. And you can always send us questions or comments or your thoughts on, on what yours would be. Cause I think it's a fun, uh, a fun little exercise. I think, I think that's going to wrap it up for this episode. We've gone a little long as we always tend to do. If you have any comments or questions, don't hesitate to reach out to any of us on social media or via email. I can be found at at adventures of a Disney dad. Chip, where can people find you? At a Robinson dad life. And Justin plug everywhere that people can find you also. At the Disney world dad on Instagram at the Disney world dad on TikTok at, Oh no, at, the Disney World Dad dot blog. If you want more of like a little bit longer form on what I'm writing about and reviews of when I'm at the parks, and I do have a ebook guide that I wrote along with my wife, the New Parents Guide to Disney World. It's on Amazon. It was a labor of love, and we're working on the second edition. But of course, the baby is like, no, you're not. But we're we're, we're it's a work in progress. Definitely check that out. And if you're interested in having me assist you in planning your next Universal or Disney vacation, please always feel free to reach out. All the links to get a free quote are in the show notes. Our services are completely free to you, and we'd love to help you plan your next dream Universal or Disney vacation. If you have a moment and you could follow, subscribe, like, and review this podcast on whatever platform you prefer, we would greatly appreciate the support. We know you have a lot of choices when it comes to the content that you consume. And as always, we hope this episode brightened your day a little bit. And thank you for spending some time with us. And we will see you in the parks. Justin, thank you again. We appreciate it, buddy. Go Tigers. Go. Oh, yeah. Bring home the championship, Chip. And we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll report on that on the next episode.